Uh, thanks, Lucy. Yeah, so I'll pass it over to Steve first. Okay. So let me just share this. Can you see my screen? No. Let me try again. Can yep. you see it now? Yes. Okay. So for my purposes, what I'm going to be talking about today is a methodology within Zukin's Design Force tool uh, to essentially create a phased array structure in a rapid fashion. And these same methodologies are applicable to any type of design with repetitive patterns. Um, so, you know, multi-channel, uh, any kind of uh, repetitive component or uh, copper array sequence um, can kind of be stepped and repeated using this, this mechanism. Um, but for our focus today, let's talk a little bit about phased array. And so what is a phased array? It's an array of small antennas. Um, and these antennas allow for attenuation and amplification um, from other sources. Um, this direction of this signal, it's controllable through the digital circuitry. So you can emphasize in one direction, X, Y, and so on. Um, and based on that, it's easy to change the direction of the signal. It's just a matter of, you know, passing a call. Um, these phased array antennas benefit from a, a great level of beam agility and adaptive beam forming, you know, and so, you know, going from the traditional dish to a phased array, and you kind of see a, a, a graphical representation there of, of what that beam forming might look like in a wave attenuation type perspective. So, you know, what kind of drove this? Well, you know, a traditional dish requires a large curved surface area. Um, and the, the farther you want to reach out with it, the bigger that, that structure has to be. You have to physically be able to aim that focal point. Um, and this can lead to kind of a slow response time or a large size of the dish. Um, the mechanical requirements for this can get quite hefty uh, as you start pushing up that you know, those structures. Um, but this type of antenna can still be preferred in cases where directivity and high gain are crucial. You really need to reach out a long way. Your very finite uh, signal that you're trying to track or search, you know, that's going to be uh, a preferred mechanism to get there. So there is still a place in the world for these. But, um, you know, that we see more and more phased array due to the digital control capability of it. And so the phased array design challenges, you know, are really that it is such a repetitive pattern. Um, you know, it's an array of many small antenna elements. Um, and so if I have one repetitive pattern that needs change made to it, and I have thousands of instances of this on a PCB, uh, well, you know, suddenly I, you know, one small change can propagate quickly. Um, you know, you need a schematic to be able to reflect those changes. So, you know, there has to be a, a, a synchronization that takes place there. Um, as these arrays get large, then data size can have an impact on the design tool's response time. Uh, it can get very difficult to have uh, an active edit capability. Um, and design changes late in the cycle have significant impact, right? So. You know, you know, you may think that you're nearly done with your design and then suddenly you've got a small RF change that needs to be made um, and and really can uh, set you back. You've got to basically go back to square one. So a new methodology was needed for this. Um, you know, we determined through some assistance of our customer base that, that reuse boards was, was the best way forward for this. Um, so you wanna create a, a one-up or a, a reuse board or seed circuit that drives many instantiations across an array. Um, so essentially a seed circuit ends up being a hierarchical PCB. 
Um, so you can instantiate it across the hierarchy just like you would in a schematic. Um, these seed circuits can contain components, routes, vias, RF patterns. Anything that you would see in a traditional PCB can be included in these seed circuits. And you can also use these at multiple levels of hierarchy. In other words, I could have one pattern that's a single, and then I could have another hierarchical pattern that's 30 elements, and then another level up from above that that's 120 and so on. So you can use this, you know, uh, basically at any level, you can say, okay, now this is a seed circuit and pass it up the tree. Um, you know, these can be natively designed in Zookin, of course, or we can import them via ODB++. So if we're using another tool to orchestrate that, then we can, we can still merge it into our tool and work from it from there. And since our tool, you know, CR8000 Design Force is a multi-core, multi-threading based tool, um, the file size really hasn't had a significant impact on our, on our work efforts here. Um, you know, it seems like we can handle those file sizes that phased ray presents with, uh, without much issue. And so, you know, looking further into the requirements, you know, we needed this hierarchical, hierarchical data structure. We need to be able to step and repeat those element boards. We need to ensure that it's design change friendly process. We need to be able capable of handling large design database, thousands of elements, and we needed bi bi-directional schematic compatibility. And so if you look at the graphics there, we've got a seed element on the left. We've got a step and repeat pattern being instantiated. Um, and then kind of the master board that's reflecting uh, all of the connectivity across that design. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more detail. So for in this sample, we essentially have an eight layer element board. Um, we're going to show a, a usage of this hierarchical board structure. There's a uh, kind of a simple copy and rotate functions that we can use in there. Um, we'll show updates up through the hierarchy. Um, and then the complete array with 84 element, 8,400 element boards um, in, in the example. And that looks a little bit like this. And so here we've got